There's a lot of overhype and grifting in the AI YouTube space right now. People are hyping up the latest and greatest releases of random GitHub projects like ChatDev, DBGPT, and MetaGPT, and tons more. You've seen these. This is cool, some are useful, but it's pretty clickbaity and it's not ultra useful. And let's face it, in five, probably three or two years, nearly all of these projects will be dead. In this video, I wanna filter through some of that noise and focus on three concrete, instant value, practical prompt engineering techniques. As soon as you finish this video, you're gonna have three new techniques available to you instantly. Let's focus on the underlying technology that's giving us all this value in the first place, LLMs. So let's get into it. The three techniques are cap refs, one word prompts, and context chaining. You've likely already used one or two of these techniques without even knowing it. Cap refs. When you're building out your reusable prompts that require several input variables, it can be hard to organize these. To get around this, I use a technique I like to call capitalized referencing or cap refs. So here's a chat log I've had with ChatGPT and let's just walk through this. Let's workshop some titles for a new YouTube video. We want high ranking SEO click worthy titles. Create 10 highly engaging click worthy titles based on existing titles. Notice how this is uppercase that combine one or more video elements below. Again, notice how this is capitalized. When you generate the title, place elements involved next to the text like this. So you can see here, I have a templated response format, that's great. And then here's the magic. I place the capitalized references in separate sections, and then I specify that variable with a list or a single item below. Then I specify the next capitalized reference afterward and specify all of its details. So as you can see here, I'm building out a prompt that allows me to create high ranking SEO click worthy YouTube titles. If you run a blog or you have a YouTube channel yourself, you know that this is a repetitious process and you wanna get the ideas going as soon as possible. But this is how you can use capitalized referencing to reference specific information in your prompts. Okay, so let's move on to another example. Let's talk about one word prompts. There are many scenarios, especially when you're using GPT-4, where you just shouldn't overthink it. If you have a problem you want fixed, that's obviously an issue, just toss one word at GPT. And this single word can save you a lot of time, a lot of typing. Let's walk through an example. So let's type PyTest, and I'm gonna paste in a Python function, right? I'm not gonna format, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna type PyTest, shift, enter, enter, and then I'm dumping in Python content. So all I'm saying is PyTest here. And as we can see, GPT is just walking through it, just explaining the code. We didn't give it a lot of details, but at the beginning I did say PyTest. And you can see here on bullet point number four, it picked that up. Since you mentioned PyTest, let's write a simple test for this function. So eventually it got the whole idea that all I wanted to do is create a test. And as you can see here, it is building that test out. Just drop a single word in paste in your content. Typically, if you're pasting rich content like code or uh, you know content from a blog or something from, you know, something that has detailed rich information, you can just say one word. If it's a verb, it'll have a higher hit rate, but you can basically just paste in a single word and GPT specifically, GPT-4 will know exactly what you want to do and it'll break it down for you. So then we can do other simple things, right? We can throw a translate at GPT. This is a you know simpler example. You just say translate, and then you paste in some text, and without specifying the languages, you can see here it's translating this French, and uh, you know it translates to I like practical engineering tips from the prompt, which is close. <laughs> this is actually uh, I like practical engineering tips for prompt engineering. So this is great, right? And then let's go ahead and look at one more example. We can do something like reword, and then we can paste in, you know, for instance, this YouTube title. Then we can paste in, for instance, like a title or a phrase, and just throw that in there. And you can see with just a single word, GPT gives us back a solid response. The great part about one word prompts is that typically GPT responds in a similar manner. You can see for both the reword and the translate, it just responded in a really like blunt forward way um, without producing a lot of text, right? We had a lot more going on here when we dumped in some code. 
And I think that's pretty typical. Uh, GPT-4 especially, it tries to walk you through everything and that's really great usually. It's nice when you get some of these shorter prompts using the one word technique and it just kind of responds with the information that you're looking for. If you guys are enjoying these concise practical tips that you can get value out of immediately, like and sub for more. On this channel, we focus on real, tangible, in the field AI tools, tech, and techniques. Speaking of techniques, let's finish with the final technique. I think this one's really cool. Let's start with the fresh chat window here so you can know that there's no tricks, there's no memory happening here. This last technique is called context chaining. You know that moving fast is the key to engineering success and just success in general. We all have 24 hours in a day, but some of us get more out of those 24 hours than others. How? Because they're moving faster. They take one swing and they cut two trees. Context chaining saves you time and lets you communicate the contexts that are relevant to your prompts insanely quickly. So for example, let's type out a prompt in like a normal fashion, right? So um, I'm building a Python CLI tool. I want to publish it to test PyPy. I'm using poetry a management tool. How can I publish package? So let's see how many characters I have here, right? Just gonna open up the console, gonna dump this in a string, type length on it. This is 148 characters, okay? So we're gonna remember that. Uh, 148 characters for this prompt right here, right? Um, I'm not gonna run this, I'm not gonna waste your time. This runs, it works fine, it tells you exactly how you can publish it using poetry. With context chaining, you can pack all this information into a much smaller prompt. Check this out. Code, Python, poetry, publish, to test PyPy. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and run this one. I'm gonna copy it, run it, and we're gonna look at the length here. This is 41 characters. I just finished publishing a Python package called diffbro. Check out the previous videos if you're interested in seeing the full process of that. But, you know, looking through this, I can confirm that this is exactly how to do this. The magic here is that we did this in 41 characters versus 148. How are we able to do this? With context chaining. Context chaining allows us to concisely pack in our prompt in a simple, compressed way. We're in the realm of coding. This is Python. We're operating in poetry. And then at the very end, we say in a really kind of brute force way, exactly what we're trying to do, publish, to test PyPy. After you give GPT all this context, publish to test PyPy is not a stretch at all. And so I just want to point out here that we cut our prompt size from about 150 to below 50. That is a three times improvement in our prompt length. We dropped it down to 41. Dropped it by a third, essentially. You're writing 10 prompts a day, right? 100 prompts a day, whatever it might be. If you can cut your prompt time down by a third every prompt, you're going to get more out of your 24 hours than the engineer sitting next to you. So just a refresh, we have capitalized references, also known as cap reps. We have one word prompts and we have context chaining. One word prompts essentially will always operate on its own, right? There's not much more you can do with a one word prompt. It either works or it doesn't work. If you think a one word prompt will get the job done, use a one word prompt. Just as a final Easter egg, let's walk through one more trick. You can combine context chaining with cap references to create even more compressed, concise prompts. So let's walk through one more example. Let's look at another Python example, right? Let's say something like this, right? We could do, uh, we could write something like code, Python, combine func1 and func2 together. And then we specify func1, this function here, we're just gonna to connect to an SQLite database. And then the second thing is gonna be func2. And we're going to give it another Python function, which is going to insert uh, to some table. And I'm just gonna hit enter here. So what we have done is combined context chaining with capitalized references. And then we specify our references here with their respective content. GPT just jumped right off and started combining these two functions. So it is both doing the connection function and the insertion function. 
and we have just combined two of these prompting techniques to speed up the efficiency of our prompting. So just to recap one more time, we have capitalized references, also known as cap refs. This lets you reference input variables in a seamless manner. We have one word prompts. If you don't need to overthink it, don't. Drop in a single word and dump your text and just let it rip. And then lastly, we have context chaining. You don't need to type as much as you think you need to. On a similar mode of one word prompts, context chaining is essentially putting together a bunch of one word prompts to tell the LLM the exact context in which you're working in. Use these three prompting techniques to save a crap ton of time over the long run, whether it's GPT-3, GPT-4, whether you're using Falcon, whether you're using any of these custom models or a different chat interface, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, we're all communicating with LLMs. So these techniques are interchangeable and will be relevant now and in the future. I think the direction things are going with LLMs is the better they become, the less information we'll need to feed them. And it's all going to be about specifying the right context so that they can load the right information they need to predict the very next token. Utilize capitalized references, one word prompts, and context chaining to excel your prompt engineering. Prompt examples in the description. Thanks for tuning in. Sub, like, and I'll see you in the next video.